welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It's a hot day in Tennessee. We're down here in the timber frame. We're gonna be making some shiplap today out of some poplar. But before we get started, I need to clean some things up in here. I've not been down here in several days. I've been working on these doors and the shop is a mess, to be honest with you. So while I'm doing that, you guys will grab you a cup of offie and sit back and enjoy some footage from about four days ago when I took this poplar to my buddy sawmill over in Hawkins County, Ethan Presley, and I ran it through his edger. Friends, this shop is still a mess, so look over me here. It's a work in progress. This right here are the boards that you guys just got through watching go through that edger. We got those ready to go, and we're gonna be making these into shiplap. And back here in the molder room is where they're going. They're going on that wall right there. And the reason I'm skipping into this room and starting on this wall is because I have a Mr. Cool unit right there. That's half of the unit actually. And the inside part of it needs to hang on this wall. So we need to get this wall finished so we can install the Mr. Cool and cool it off in here. It's getting pretty hot in the shop. And I know before you guys say anything down in the comments, it's gonna be hard to cool the shop off without any doors. But as you can see, one of the sliding doors is finished. I'll build the other one tomorrow. It takes me about a day to build those. And the two main entry doors, one of them's done and one of them I started last night. So hopefully within the next few days, we'll have this shop closed up and then put the Mr. Cool unit on that wall and cool it down. It's getting pretty hot in Tennessee this time of year. The high today is 98. All right, so the first step in making shiplap out of this poplar is skip plane it through the grizzly planer. That's not the first step. The first step was saw milling, kiln drying, and then also running it through an edger. So I guess this is step number three. Is that right? Number three? No, number four. Step number four. And the reason why I skip plane these boards at one inch and I don't take them directly to the molder is because these are fresh out of the kiln a few days ago and they're not flat on the top, guys. I can saw very flat, but after you kiln dry stuff, it's not perfect anymore. Because the loss of moisture and the different grain in your board, there's a lot of issues with it. So you gotta run it through a planer. Now I could take these boards directly to the molder and run them straight through and they probably turn out okay. But if I skip plane them first and get the high spots knocked down, it will make a better product. That's another reason you run these through the edger is to get a nice straight board going through the molder. Now I'll talk about that more here in just a few minutes. Now let's crank up the Grizzly planer and run these boards through. And by the looks of the dust collector bag, I'm probably gonna have to dump this after a few boards.
Now let me explain why we took all these boards down to Hawkins County and ran them through that edger. Let's go ahead and open up the lid. All right, friends, if you're new to this channel, this is my Woodmiser MP260 four-sided molder. Well, what's a four-sided molder? What it does, it planes all four surfaces of a board on one pass. Or you can do two sides or one side, whatever you want to do. You can cut all these little motors on that run these heads individually. You don't have to run all four at the same time. So when a board enters this machine, it passes over this bottom cutter that cuts the bottom of the board. Then it hits this first side cutter right here, which cuts the side. Then we have another side cutter over here for the other side of the board. And then as it exits the machine, it goes under this helical cutter, which surfaces the top of the board. Hence, four-sided molder right there. And it also has auto feed. You got rollers throughout this whole process right here that controls the speed of the lumber coming through. And you can also control that speed with this dial right here. And for you guys out there that have this machine, don't adjust your feed unless it's running. If you adjust this and the motor's not running, you can damage this right here. So always make sure it's running. Went ahead off camera and made my first test piece cut with this machine to dial it in, and I got it dialed in on the first try, actually. This right here is what we're making. You can see the profile right there. This is a shiplap profile with an eighth of an inch reveal. So the shiplap kind of has a little distance between each other as the boards butt together. Let's see if I can show that right here. Put it on the right side. Bring the camera down for you guys. So right there, you can see that little gap between the boards as they come together. I like that more than I do a traditional shiplap where it just bonds together or seals it up right there. I think it looks pretty good. So here's why we run this through the edger. When it goes through the molder, it's doing both sides of your board right here and right here. The straighter your edges are, on your lumber going into this machine, the straighter the shiplap's gonna be. If you put a board through here that's not been edged and it has a varying width of maybe up to three quarters of an inch or half an inch, it's gonna wobble in here because this, this is a really good machine, guys, but it's not a miracle maker. You have to have your lumber prepared properly before you send it through this machine. So these side cutters are really close together right here. They're about maybe eight inches apart. Now, if these side cutters were about four foot apart, it would straighten your edges as the lumber goes through. But since they're closer together, you're better off taking your lumber and straight line ripping it or running it through an edger before it goes through this machine. That way you can have really nice straight boards coming out of the machine right there. If you check that out, a really nice fit nice and straight and it works every time. It's just an extra step you have to go through to get the best lumber possible out of this machine. So I hope I was pretty clear about that. If I was not, you guys let me know down in the comments below and you usually do. And maybe I can answer your questions down there if I didn't cover everything properly. So now we're gonna close the hood, turn this machine on, make some shiplap and install it on this wall back here. I think it's gonna look pretty good.
friends, I've got a pretty decent start today on this shiplap. Got three boards installed. I think that's going to look pretty good on this wall right here. What do you guys think? I'll probably end up finishing all these walls in this room with the poplar so it blends in together. But I got to stop because of two reasons. Reason number one is my Porter Cable Brad Nailer, I bought this thing brand new a couple of months ago on Amazon. I think it was about $200. And I've had a lot of trouble with it, friends, and it just quit working again. I don't know what the deal is. I'm about ready to throw it in the trash, to be honest with you. I don't know what's going on with this gun. It works fine for about 10 minutes, and then it just quits working. I'm not sure what's going on with it. Who knows? So reason number two is I just got a phone call from Bruno and looks like I have plans this afternoon. He's wanting to go swimming and after that he wants to go to Carter Fold, which is over in the Southwest Virginia and listen to some bluegrass music. And uh, let me see if I can explain this the right way. For you guys not familiar with that place, it's a small concert venue in the backwoods of Virginia over in a place called Hilton's and it was founded by the Carter family. If you're not familiar with the Carter family, they're the first family of country music. Johnny Cash was married to June Carter, and there was Abel Carter and A.P. Carter. He's the guy that kind of started that whole group back in the 40s, I think, either the 30s or the 40s, I can't remember. But their uh, home place, I guess you would call it, which is Carter Fold, is about 20 miles away, and we go over there a few times a year to listen to music. But I'll tell you what I'll do. For you people that are not even close to this area, and you'll probably never go to Carter Fold, I'll take one of my cameras tonight, if they let me, and show you guys on video kind of what the venue looks like and what goes on over there. I won't be able to play any of the music because I'm sure there'll be some kind of copyright violation if I do. Just by seeing what's going on over there, it would give you an idea of what that place is all about. So we'll see you back here in a minute over at Carter Fold. <laughs> 